What's up adventure travellers? Ray here from Auckland, New Zealand and thanks for tuning in to Two Wheels to Everywhere. 75 days until the ride begins and today I'm going to be taking you through the personal effects, clothing and bits and pieces that I'm taking on the ride. Everything's in my duffel bag here. There's a few controversial bits and pieces and some of you will say, well why are you taking that? Why do you need that? Once again, you're probably right, but I can always get rid of it on the ride. So let's open up the goodie bag and see what's inside. Let's start unpacking the bag, but before we do that, let's start with the bag itself. The choice of bag might have been a mistake. I chose a North Face a heavy duty canvas bag. Looks really good. It's, it's very rugged. It's made out of some sort of waterproof canvas. And the reason why I chose this was because I'd seen another rider with it on the back of his bike. I liked that it was yellow, it was visible, and I know the North Face stuff is pretty good and it's not cheap either. So I figured, well, if someone else has done 100 to 200,000 Ks with a North Face bag on the back of their bike, then it can't be too bad. I was gonna take a, a Givy bag. The guys at Motor Mail in Auckland have a great line of Givy accessories, and I had this great 40 liter or 60 liter roll bag lined up, and then I saw the yellow one and decided to go with that. And I didn't really think about it too hard. Typical man. Just go out and, and buy it. Someone else is using it, must be good. But the potential problem with this bag, not being a roll bag, is that it has a zipper flap on the top. And as you can see, if I'm in heavy rain, there's a chance for rain to come in. And if it's sitting down like that, and it'll go through the zipper into the bag. So this is how the zipper works. There you go, you've got your top flap for lack of a better term and away she goes. So there's a chance for heavy rain to come in through this zipper and get everything soaking wet or at least wet to a certain degree. Now I'm going to be carrying my, my tech gear, my IT gear, my laptop, my drone and everything in this bag as well. So it's pretty important that what's inside is kept dry. The answer you might say is pretty simple. Ditch the bag and get a, get a roll bag. As I said, the North Face gear is, isn't cheap. This was, I don't know, 300 odd Kiwi, and I'm reluctant to ditch it because it is a good bag, apart from this uh, zip. So I've decided to do a bit of a patch up solution. And in the instances where it does rain and I do have to keep riding and I just can't stop and, and wait till the rain stops, might be a bit of a bodgy solution, you tell me. I've got the ground sheet of my tent and I'm gonna keep it in the end pocket there. And if it starts raining, I'm just gonna get it out, wrap the bag in the, in the ground sheet and that's my makeshift waterproofing for riding through the rain. Anyway, first item out of the bag. Let's start with the, with the end pocket. Okay, so I've got the, the ground sheet in there. This is a bag of uh, padlocks. I've got two big padlocks. They go on the front and rear disc when I'm locking the bike overnight. And I've got three smaller padlocks in there, which I don't have a use for, so I'll probably ditch those before I go. Okay, so that's that. The other thing in the end pocket is the bike cover. Now, I, I understand that a bike cover is actually quite a good bit of security gear, even though the bike is bigger there may be a lot of other bikes in Southeast Asia, so it'll still stand out with a cover. If you can put a cover on it, as well as protecting it from any potential rain overnight, it's quite a good security feature, and people won't pay as much attention to the bike when it's got a cover on it. So, taking that cover. Earplugs, I've got a bag of free earplugs, so they're going in there. I'll just go through those as I need them. And, Jandals for the hot days when I'm off the bike. Okay, next little bit of controversial luggage that I'm taking. I'm taking a light pair of boots. Now, why am I taking boots? Well, 
I want something to wear when I'm off the bike. I don't want to be clomping around in my motorcycle boots the whole time. So they're for wearing in the evening or just other times when I've got my jeans on and I don't want to be wearing my clomping around in my motorcycle boots. I've got my favorite cap, Red Bull cap. You would have seen this before in the other videos. I'm currently wearing my lovely pink IHC cap. And I'll just mention this briefly. IHC is a charity that looks after disabled people in New Zealand. And I'm going to be doing a bit of uh, fundraising for them along the way. But we'll get to that in another video. So yes, I'm taking two caps. Do I really need two caps? No, but my favorite cap and my IHC cap. So that's that. Okay, here is my plastic bag full of papers. And I'll probably be adding to this with copies of the, the carnet for the bike. But I'll just take you through this quickly. So I've got some, uh, I think it's A5 and there's probably about 20 of those in there. On one side, probably can't see this, that's my New Zealand driver's license details and on the other side are my passport details. So if I, um, I'll probably need to give those out at borders, land borders. So I copied off, I think it's a couple of dozen of those. Rego papers for the bike to show that I own it. And I've got in this little pouch, I've got my passport, I've got my international driver's license, um, a little bit of currency. I'll need to get some US dollars as well. I'll get some, not sure if I just said that, I'll get some copies of the carne made as well. And I've got about 40 passport size photos. Apparently you need those at a lot of borders and what have you. So I got those printed out. Okay, next item that might be a little bit controversial is this big bag of drugs. I mean, look at that. It's massive. So I went to the travel doctor and got all my inoculations, which cost an arm and a leg close to, I don't know, somewhere between one and two thousand dollars. And they gave me altitude sickness pills, stomach pills, uh, also, you know, pills for diarrhea and all that sort of thing. But also what makes up about half of the packet is I'm prone to back spasms and so I need a painkiller and a muscle relaxant. So I'm just a bit, a bit worried that when I get to the border, if they're going through my bags and they see this, I've got some hydration sachets in there as well. Do I need those really? Yeah, all sorts of, all sorts of crap. I've got some drops. I, um, I scratched my cornea quite, quite badly. Thought that I might have been partially blind about a year or so ago. It's healed up, but I do get problems with a, with a dry cornea. And sometimes I, um, I have trouble opening my eye first thing in the morning, so I, I need the drops. I've got a band-aids. So I won't go on about that too much, but that's a big, that's a big bag of drugs that I'm worried might cause me some problems on the border somewhere. But anyway. Let's see how we go with those. Okay, I have a small travel towel. It's one of those quick dry roll up things from MacPack. I have a down jacket from MacPack again. And so that's just a jacket that I can wear off the bike in the, in the evenings, rolls up nice and small. Three pairs of riding socks, plus the pair I'll be wearing on the bike, so that's four pairs of socks in total. Four spare pairs of undies, plus the pair I'll be, I'll be riding, uh, wearing on the bike, so that's five pairs of undies in total. Now, toiletries. Keeping it very simple, cake of soap, small shaving foam, but once that runs out I might just save with, shave with soap, toothbrush, uh, nail clippers and tweezers oh, and, uh, and disposable razor. So keeping that nice and small. I have my merino gear which I mentioned in the, in the riding gear video in case it gets cold in the tent or cold on the road. I've got that to keep me warm. I'll just go over that again. That's socks, um, long johns, 
long sleeve top and a merino beanie. So if I had any cold weather, that will hopefully keep me warm. Okay, a little bit of a controversial item here, <coughs> exercise bands. I'm quite into my fitness. I run, I lift weights, I do stretching, I hit the boxing bag, might have you. And obviously when you're on the road for close to two years, you've got to improvise. So I've got these bands and you can, you know, do your exercises and, and, and things like that. We'll see how we go with those. If I don't use them, I can always chuck them. But I'll be doing, you know, press-ups and sit-ups and, and things to keep fit along the way. A lot of people think that riding is quite a physical activity. It's not actually. You're just sitting down and grrrr. Most of the time, yeah, you're getting on and off the bike and you're burning calories and what have you, but you're not taxing your cardiovascular system that hard or your muscular system. So I've got these exercise bands. I was going to take a skipping rope, but I flagged that. So just staying on the whole exercise theme, I have, I've got some running shoes, two pairs, whoop, two pairs of socks. And you might be saying to yourself, well, if you've got running shoes, why do you need those boots? And that's an excellent point. Um, I can wear these with jeans in the evening. They're probably more comfortable in the, than the boots. And although I just want to keep these for walking and exercising. So I can always ditch the boots or send them back home if I need. Uh, okay, I've got this sort of funny little round bag. That, but I'm just going to use that as a, as a laundry bag. I'll just hang on to that. So. I'll chuck the smelly t-shirts and, and undies in there until I get to a laundromat or a washing machine. One pair of heavy duty shorts for off the bike. One pair of jeans off the bike. Ew. What do we got here? So, four t-shirts plus the one I'll be wearing on the bike. So that's five t-shirts in total. Back on the old exercise thing, exercise singlet. And I've got some exercise shorts, which can double as togs or swimmers or bathers or whatever you want to call them. So that's the exercise gear. Now, back onto the controversial items. I've just shown you my set of merinos, but also with the Revit gear, the Sands 4 anyway, it comes with some liners. Now, I think I showed you this in the riding gear, but you've got the pants, and then you've got a jacket liner as well. Do I need two sets of, of gear to keep me warm? Probably not. I know Andy and Elisa from Mad or Nomad, I think it was Elisa that had the Sands, the Revit Sands 4 gear. She actually sent her liner back to the UK. I really hate the cold, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it with me just in case. Probably don't need it. Maybe I won't take it with me, I don't know. I need to decide soon because I'm packing up my house in a week and I need to pack it in the house if I don't take it with me. So I need to make a decision on that. Tell me what you guys think. The only place I'm really worried about getting cold in is towards the end of next year, I'm gonna be around Pakistan, Iran and Iraq. As I, as I close out 2024, sort of, I've got this rough aim of being in Saudi Arabia by the 1st of, of January. Now I know in the Northern Hemisphere, around November, December, it gets cold. And so there is a possibility that I will hit some cold weather. Do I need the merino and the liners? Maybe not. So let's, let's I'll just have to do something. Give me some feedback on that. If any of you have been in Iran or Iraq or Pakistan around the November, December time on your bikes, uh, let me know what you think. Do I need the liners and the merinos or can I just get away with the merinos? Oh, oh everything's falling apart. Okay, taking a long sleeve denim shirt just for wearing out, I don't know, maybe if I need to go to a mosque or something, where I need full coverage right up, up to the wrists and so I'm taking a shirt. Do I need that? Well, probably not essential. One piece of reading, if you're going to read something while you're away, might be might as well be something epic and something that you can go back to more than once. So I've chosen Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. For those of you that don't know, Marcus Aurelius was considered the greatest ruler of the Roman Empire in the history of the empire. 
So I'm not sure if it's, it's probably not light reading, but hopefully I'll learn some philosophical things on the way. Once again, I can always send it back. And as I've shown you before, it's all going to hell in a handbasket here. So I've shown you guys before the wet weather gear. So I've got my nice high-vis jacket and I've got my pants. So I'm going to be keeping that in the top flap here. So if it does start raining and I, and I need to get into my wet weather gear, I can just whip the flap open, get into my wet weather gear and the ground sheet for the tent is going to be in this end pocket here so I can whip that open if it's raining heavily and wrap it around the bag. Now one question that you might be asking or thinking is what size is the bag? I'm a little bit embarrassed to say this but it's actually a 90 litre bag. A lot of riders take 40s or, or at maximum 60s. The reason I took a, a 90 litre bag is that better to have too much carrying capacity than not enough. I know the old thing is you know if you've got a house or the bigger the house or the bigger the bag or the bigger the garage or whatever you're just going to fill it up with shit and that's absolutely true but as well as all that stuff that I've uh, shown everyone just now I'm also going to be taking my tech gear in this bag so on the panniers I'm going to be carrying my camping gear and my tools and my spares and everything else so my, my personal effects and my tech equipment is going to be going in the duffel bag so as well as all the stuff I just showed you I'm going to be taking my laptop, my drone uh, my GoPro Pro accessories, the, the spare batteries, the tripod that's filming this at the moment. I might even carry the tripod on the outside of the bag because it'll just make it easier if I want to um, do some tripod shots. Getting off the bike, setting up the tripod and um, doing the drive-by shot and then packing it away might just make life a little bit easier to pack that on the outside. It does take, even when it's even when the tripod's packed down, it does take a little bit of room. So that's it. Short and sweet this week, hopefully. Have I covered everything off? I've covered off the stuff that I think I might not need, such as the boots and the um, jacket lining and that sort of thing. But is there anything I'm missing? Let me know in the comments below if there's something you think is essential and I haven't got it here. I'm taking a couple of pairs of reading glasses, which I didn't talk about, maybe one or two uh, little bits and pieces, but that's the main thing. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you're interested in watching the ride that's going to take about 20 months from end to end. Give me some feedback, and importantly, if you know anyone that you think might like this video series, uh, please share it with them. And in the next video, I'm going to be talking about the money side of things, uh, the costs that I've incurred so far, how I've budgeted which is a very haphazard uh, process as you'll see and I'll also be talking a little bit about things relating to cost but also the logistics of the carne, visas, inoculations, that sort of thing. So the next video is generally going to be about the cost of things and I'll be t touching on other bits and pieces that relate to that. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Cheers!